one event, you can't succeed with the other parts. First, a higher grip is going to bring your power closer to the pivot point. You always have the thumb pointing towards the target. That's a subtle enhancement that is more important later on. Firmly placing this, but not the lifeline, into your bow grip. Maintaining a 45 degree angle with your knuckles. If you do not do this, the other parts will not work. I'll hold it with my index finger since I'm not using a finger sling. The next thing is that this elbow has to be vertical. It has to be in a plane with your riser. Not like this where you smack it, but vertical. And by keeping it vertical, you bring into alignment the bones with the bones in the hand. And in fact, when it's done really well, this scored tendon that's sticking up becomes part of the draw force resistance. Now the next thing is as you come up, you are triggering tension in your tricep. Now if your arm is flat, with a crease flat, you cannot generate tension in the tricep the same way you can when your arm is vertical. Try it. You'll find that you can tense your tricep much better with a vertical elbow. That locks your shoulder through the anchor point of the tricep, which is in this part of your back, so that your shoulder comes down. Not up, but down. You've now locked everything into one single unit of bone to take the stress of the bow as you draw back. You're also using the serrates down here, the latits. That's really key to stability in your bow arm. If you don't have the knuckles, then when your bow fires, your hand goes like this or like that. If it's vertical with a 45, then it tilts straight down, diminishing the influence of the bow on lateral side motion of the arrow release. Got to have this to get this to maintain the tension and the strength in the upper arm and lock it in to the entire shoulder assembly. The rest of it, alignment, there's a whole lot more to it, but that's the basics and will probably help you with your issue right now.